Let's let's get to our first topic. <laughs> don't over don't overthink the room. And sometimes when you're 30 and you're trying to figure out, can you say P? You're just overthinking the room. Yes, you can say it. it, it, it no one cares. So we came on here last week, and I, I tried to say that the Buccaneers may struggle with the Eagles. The Eagles could keep it close. I, I trusted Bill Belichick too much, although I understood that their roster was nothing like the Bills roster and their rookie quarterback, cold game, playoffs from Jacksonville, Florida, played at Alabama. Come on. Come on, big baby. You know better than that. I underestimate. And, and, hold on, hold on. I'm monologue. I'm monologue. I'm monologue. Right, right. And, and, and then what's the other game? And then the Chiefs Steelers. I go, nah, the Steelers defense, they're going to. Bro, Big Ben in the third quarter had 98 passing yards. At the end of the third quarter, he had 98 passing yards. And that's who Big Ben's been all year. But I'm not going to lie to you, to, to y'all, to the, to, the, to the listeners. When you come on here and you talk about this stuff all the time, sometimes you don't want to say the obvious thing because you're like, hold on, let, let's think about this. Let's try to find, like, let's try to find a, a, a something that nobody else may be saying or a way of thinking that nobody else is thinking about right now. And you get yourself in trouble because sometimes y'all get mad at the Stephen A's, the Cowherds, the Nick Rice, the Skip Baylesses when you think they're just talking crazy. But honestly, you're trying to find an edge, a corner that nobody else is on. And then you end up realizing, hey, bro, it's a reason why everybody wore white forces. Because they hard. <laughs> like, there's no substitute for a crispy pair of white forces. I don't care if you if you got $5 in your pocket, you got $5 billion. Like, if you put on a pair of crispy white, brand new white forces, anywhere you go, that's P. <laughs> Push it. <laughs> so, I'm going to say don't overthink the room. Paul A.P., why did you let me overthink the room last week? I, I Look, I, well, I tried to warn you about the Bucks. You know, I, I, I think that the question that everybody had to ask when it came to the Eagles was more along the lines of, okay, hell, we saw them in the first game of the season. They were like, okay. You know, is this just how bad the Falcons really are? Or is this like kind of like what the Eagles are going to be like this year? And I think they finished the season more like that team that we saw in the first game. So mm -hmm. they came in with the momentum. And then even though they got waxed in the last game, now granted Jalen Hurts didn't play, but they did still get waxed. Everybody else played. And it's not like uh, Gardner Minshew's a god-awful backup. You know, he's a competent enough backup to where if you're in a division rivalry game and you're, you've already got playoffs locked up, you still want to kind of send a message or even beat them to where you, maybe you get to play them again the following week. I don't know. Like, um, <clears throat> but um, I think that when it came to that game, I definitely warned you. I warned you about the Bucks. Now we were drinking the same Kool-Aid when it came to the Steelers. And I think with the Steelers, my thought was just that, you know, like that, the Steelers' defense is still pretty good. They've got good. They have the defensive player of the year on their team. They've got Minka Fitzpatrick. They got Joe Hayden. They've got like these guys. Like they've got guys. Tom Mike T is still the coach, and Ben's on his last. You know, it's it's his. Uh, you know, it's his last ride. And so it just was kind of like they can show up enough to cover a two touchdown spread. And like I said, they did get close for what it's worth. If they didn't get blitzed for eight minutes. Um, but they did get blitzed, and we knew that that's who they were in reality, and we knew that's who the Chiefs really were too. We know that that's who they are. We know who Patrick Mahomes is. You know, he he doesn't get crowned for no reason. Like that's a bad motherfucker. Like throwing that, he he can he can throw that rock. Like you know what I mean. And um, and Andy Reid is going to put him in a position to throw that rock in even better situations. So. That one, you know, we, we just got to take our L and, and, and say that we overthought it. And now we know going forward. And with the Bills game, too, similar thing. I think that we thought that Bill Belichick was super P, you know, because he's been P his whole career. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? And I think that for me personally, when it came to the Bills, I like the Bills. I like, I like Josh Allen and I like the Bills. And, like, I think that I just looked at it a certain way because I just was there and watched my team play them and we were beating them at halftime and it was fucking, you know, in the teens in weather and it was snowing. So I'm just thinking, well, Bill Belichick certainly going to have a better defense and probably just as competent of an offense as the Falcons going to a place that you've already won in a team that you pretty much own 
you know, granted with Tom Brady for a majority of the time, but a team that you pretty much have owned, you know, for two decades. And so I think that we overthought it because we thought that it was just too good to be true that they were giving Belichick points like that. When in reality, the Bills are just, they're the real deal. And I think that when we see this upcoming week, when those two teams play each other, Chiefs and um, Bills, we're probably going to get probably the best playoff game potentially. And I know the NFC and AFC championship games are always normally good. Sometimes they're blowouts, but for the most part, they're instant classic type games. Like, I mean, I've seen some really good ones. Um, but like, uh, like the first one that comes to my mind is Saints Vikings. Like, I'll never forget that game. But, um, Great game. Falcons beating the Vikings in 98. I remember being a kid watching that. Um, but nonetheless, I think that we're going to get one of those instant classic type games because of how Kansas City got beat. And so hopefully we don't overthink next week or this week in coming up. Hey, you know, real quick, let's be Falcons homers real quick like we like to be. I remember back to that 98 season and all the commentary coming off of it. And everybody talks about how we ruined the Vikings 15 in one season. They're not realizing that we were 14 and two. It's not like we were a, a 11 and five team going to the NFC championship. We were Probably the only time in NFL history that a 14 and two team was a two seed. <laughs> right. Like, we're, you know, and, and we've seen 13 and three and 12 and four wild cards. Right. Yeah. But I don't think we've ever seen a 14 win team be a number two seed. Like, hold on. A 14 and two team is a dog in the NFC championship. <laughs> yeah. And, and I would be interested to look up exactly what the lines were back then. But I have to imagine – obviously, we covered because we won. But I would have to imagine the Falcons were probably almost a touchdown dog. dog. Um, like minus six, five and a half, something like that. Like, Because that's, that's, that's back in the days where home home field gives you three. And yeah. everybody well, – They still use that today. That home field automatically gives you three. Well, listening to Bill and Sal this week, apparently it's dropping to two and a half now. Really? Yeah, that th- they said it. I believe it. Like I, I, I trust cousin Sal when he talks about like the nuances of Vegas. Isn't what that is- even isn't that even scarier than with the 49ers spread last week against the Cowboys? I couldn't believe. I just couldn't believe it because I'm like the 49ers aren't a team that gets blown out. So I guess I just didn't understand why they were giving them three and a half. I, I don't know. I thought that was a relatively easy pick. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, and we know who the Cowboys are. So that's that's a little shocking that they're even – well, and, you know, actually it makes more sense because if it was three and a half, two and a half makes it six. Fair. Hey, right, so let's, let, let, let's, let's go back to these three games, right, in, in our don't overthink the room. Uh, let's go to, to, to Bucks philly first. Phillies came out and they said that they're going to keep Jalen Hurts as their starter. <laughs> They got they got three first rounders. Um, I think that Jalen Hurts is good enough to be your starting quarterback. He had a terrible first playoff game, terrible first playoff game. Let's be honest. I expected it. He's a he's a second year player in his first full season starting. Um, he's not the refined passer that you'd like to have. Uh, seeing as as he got benched by Tua, who is barely an NFL starter anymore. If we're being honest, he won seven games in a row. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, he beat some bad teams, just like Jalen beat some bad teams, uh, just like Dak beats bad teams. But I'm just saying, he had a winning record as a starter this season because he missed the games when they were losing. He wasn't playing. Well, he had, he two has a, as a, has a winning record as an NFL starter. Let's be, let's be if we're being honest. But we we He's watch the eye the eye test does matter. But I look yeah. at Jalen Hurts right and. I, I saw that Nick Sirianni finally decided in the towards the end of the season, middle to the end, to actually run a Jalen Hurts offense. At first, he wanted to run his offense outside of the first game of the year, from game two to, like, game nine. He wanted to run his own offense. And then he finally figured out, let's run the Oklahoma offense for Jalen Hurts. Now, what I'd like to see is if you're going to really put your faith in Jalen Hurts, you double down on Jalen Hurts just like Baltimore doubled down on Lamar Jackson. Because when Lamar Jackson came in, we didn't like him as a passer. And each year, he's gotten better. This past season, yes, he was hurt. But each year, Lamar has shown improvement, right? Yeah. Hey, every year, Jalen Hurts has shown improvement. We see things We see things from him that that shows us that, he has potential, but I think because we live in this microwave society of 
everybody's supposed to be Joe Burrow when they come into the league. They're supposed to be Andrew Luck when they come into the league. That's not the case. Some of these guys need three to four years to actually figure out who they are because especially as a as a quarterback with great feet, a great runner, your natural instinct is to be the best athlete on the field, not be the best passer on the field at times because being the best athlete has been what's helped you out so much. And talking to some people who um, who have a good understanding of what Jalen Hurts is, I, the question was asked, hey, what should give me optimism about Jalen Hurts moving forward? Quick answer, his character, who he is, he works hard, he understands it, he's accountable, and he takes his sure. – he embraces his flaws, and he goes and works on them. So I think year two in Sirianni's system, a good offseason, that Philly's going to have a chance to battle for that division next year uh, as long as they go all in on Jalen Hurts and they're not one foot in, one foot out. I think it just depends on what happens with Dallas, first of all. Like, I think that's going to be a big deal. Um if they keep Mike McCarthy, I think it definitely opens that door for sure. Uh, but my thing with Philly is this. You're in a position now where this offseason is probably your most important offseason since you decided to go with Carson Wentz over Nick Foles after you won the Super Bowl. Oh, um, And really, actually, no, because the very next year they made the playoffs and Nick Foles won them another playoff game. And then that was when Nick Foles went to Jacksonville and they signed Carson Wentz to all that money. And you made a great move. I mean, look at how much the Eagles fucked the Colts. Not only did the Colts not make the playoffs, they, don't get the they gave them a first-round pick, and you did make the playoffs when this was supposed to be a rebuild year. Now, the question will be, do the Eagles take that step back? You know, what, I, whether it be Jalen Hurts' progression, doesn't he doesn't necessarily get that much better. And then the teams around them get better. Like, I mean, Washington's going to be better. I think if they get a quarterback, depending on what happens there, they're going to be better. Um, who else is in that division? Um, the, the Giants. Giants. Yeah, so, there's, nah, they look like dog shit, but who knows? Who knows? I mean, Russell Wilson is out there. And I think we all know that Sierra wants to grow that brand a little bit more. Uh, yeah, he is since body party. Oh, hey, hey, we were in college, yeah, yeah. But you know, when I think of Sierra, I don't even think of her music then. I think of her music, I know the music video, you know, but uh, I think of, I think of Rod. I think Boink Boink said that he, he's he got he's got a love for that that uh body party video, or yeah, was it the Rod video? Nah, both of them, are, both I don't of know. Them are like he said it was damn near soft I mean, porn to him. Like, but, if, uh, you, if you want to talk about soft core porn that's allowed on fucking you know, TV. Shit. You know, it – hey. I see why Russ listens to her. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, and Future, 50 Cent, Bow Wow. Um, Reggie Bush. Reggie Bush, host of guys, host of guys that, you know, they liked it too, and they saw and They wanted to see if it, if she could do I, it on the dick. But, you, um, know, you know, I I, I I leave my current situation for that. I think, I think it'd be understood. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> a lot of men would. A lot of men would. But um, nonetheless, I think that with Philly, it's going to really come down ultimately to what they do this all season. You've got three first-round picks, albeit they're all jumbled up at like 14, 16, and like 18 or something like that. They're jumbled up. They're middle to kind of late. Um, but it's a bad and, quarterback draft. But you've also got a guy, too, that that showed improvement that some people would take a chance on. So for me, if I'm Philly – the first thing I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get one of them Whopper quarterbacks. You know, I want I want Watson, Wilson, Rodgers. I I'm I'm doing everything I can to package Hurts. That way they've got somebody. Like if he goes to Seattle, Seattle would have to figure out what they're going to do, whether they draft a guy or they want to take a chance on a guy like Hurts. I would be trying to package him in a deal along with probably two of those picks. If it took all three to get, if it's Russell or Aaron, it's worth three. Yeah, I was gonna say I'd be willing to give up those picks to I, and Deshaun too. Like, who, who am I bullshitting? Yeah, I don't think Casario wants uh, Jalen Hurts though. And w- Watson would be really who you. I mean, ideally because he's the youngest, and we know he's a fucking baller. Like, we know that Deshaun Watson's a baller. The Eagles have good enough pieces to where he could to be very successful up there. Um, so if, if I'm them, that's what I'm trying to do. Like, I don't want them to overthink the room themselves. 
as an organization and look at, you know, we got this, but we've seen so many teams take step backs. Hell, I bet a bunch of people looked at Blake Bortles after they went to the AFC Championship. He threw like 38 touchdowns that year and 15 picks. He wasn't god awful. And I know what you're saying. The eye test told you something different, but the Jaguars had a dominant defense. They won 11 games. He did throw like 38 touchdowns. Got, uh, What's his face paid up in Chicago, which now he wants to get out of there too. Allen Robinson got him paid. Um, who's the other wide receiver? They had another wide receiver too. Bro, um, they, it was Allen Robinson and somebody else. They paid. They paid him after that though, which was fucking stupid. You didn't even have to pay him. Yeah, and so, but I'm just saying. Now look, everybody thought that he was building on something, and that was like year two or three for him. And now what? But, Blake Bortles is like but, out of the league. But nobody, nobody with with good eyes said, "Hey, Blake Bortles has a skill set that I think that I can build around." Well, he was total typical white quarterback, six five, big arm, athletic. You know. He, he was he run was, a little bit like he you know. was he was like the Milwaukee's best version of Josh Allen, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's fair. Yeah, he's a, lot more, a lot more successful in college though, because he was good. He was good at UCF. UCF yeah. was good when he was there. Yeah, but UCF has now shown that they actually have a pretty good program, and it may have been the program and not Blake Portals. That fair enough. Fair enough. And now well, they got now they got Gus. They got Gus captain in that shit. And he's probably gonna. He's probably gonna get the SEC uh, job after next year, right? I mean, maybe he's gonna get Fickle a run for his money for best, uh, uh, whatever that the American Athletic Conference, the AAC. Yeah, Yeah, the AAC, whatever the hell that is. Fickle, he should have went to Notre Dame, but go ahead. (laughs) But anyways, let's get another thing that happened in this game. this, This Bucks, this Bucks Eagles game is. Uh, your boy BA Bruce Arians, huh, idiot. He slapped he slapped the player in the back of the head. Paul AP. If your coach, not your high school coach, I'm talking about your NFL coach, slaps you in the head like that during a game, what is your response? Don't fucking touch me. Like, and you know, at that point. I'm going to need an apology. I'm going to be a grown man about it. Like, I'm not going to act like I don't have any self-control and try and fight him or anything, but I will address it with him because just like him, it's just like, bro, I'm a grown man too. And we both make millions of dollars. So like, why are you, do- what is, what was that for? Like, bro, what was the point? I, I, and then I'm like telling the ownership, like, and at that point I would probably, depending on him, I know that they've won and they're like, they're in the midst of a playoff run. It's bigger than that, and Brady gets to galvanize the guy and tell him, man, fuck, fuck BA. He could tell him like that in private, like, fuck BA. Like, man, we're here to try to win some football games. But something like that, I'm not also just not letting no grown man slap me upside the head. And so, like, you know, at that point, you know, in the offseason, I'm telling my agent, look, I got to get out of here. So here's how I think I'd respond. Because if I slapped him, like you- slap him upside his head, I'd be cut. You're not get a job again. I'd be cut, right? And so, like, a, like AB, like, <laughs> if I like think about it, like, what, bro? Imagine not slapping him upside the head and just knocking his like fucking headset off or something. Like he slapped his headset off or something. You're done. Or, or what if you tripped him on on his leg with the uh with the rupt- with the uh, partially torn Achilles? You just trip him. Yeah, and so I just at the end of the day, I know I'm a football player, and I know that you know. No, no, I'm not letting you do that. Here's the thing. We're definitely going to have a verbal confrontation right there. Like, I'm not going to hit you, but because you just slapped me in my head on national TV and I got a mom at home, I probably got a baby mom at home. If I got a baby mom, I got a kid at home or in the stands and they seeing that. And, And I'm not a parent. You are. But... I feel like there are certain things that you can that that there are certain responses that you have in front of your child that may be different if your child never knows about it, because especially as a grown man, we're supposed to be protectors of 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 the people in our lives, especially the women in our lives. You being a girl dad. Yep. And no grown man just going to slap me in my head. I'll be like, oh, man, that's just coach coaching us hard. Nice. Nah, 
No, it isn't. He could have. He could have. Well, he could have. He could have verbally assaulted me and like called me a bitch, you know, dumbass, whatever. Like you can think of, and I would have been more susceptible to that than you putting your hands on me. And then, more specifically, the way you put your hands on me, you didn't like grab my like jersey and like pull me closer so you can hear me, like talk to me. No, man, my back was turning. You fucking smacked me upside the head. You know, <laughs> think about smacking somebody upside the head. How many people have you had, you had to smack upside the head? Bro, I haven't smacked anybody upside the head since like middle school when we were dumb kids. And then somebody would say something stupid, be like, oh, yeah, give me that neck. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, that's what I, I say. And that's actually what I was about to say. I don't think I've ever smacked anybody upside the head, but I've definitely, you know, necks and nick. niggas used to neck niggas. Like, you know, that's. Nah, we, we, before we did necks, we did this thing called a muff, and that was upside the head. It wasn't the neck. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's some car. No, I just remember shit. people getting, when you got a clean neck, <laughs> like, Oh, but again, especially when a nigga got a fresh haircut or something, like it's either a fresh haircut or it's like you said something stupid, hey, bro. Like, you, as soon as you say something, hey, bro, you idiot. In yeah, you know, like, so, like, it's the same thing. Like, I, I'm sure the player probably did something stupid on the field. So, Bruce Aaron's like, hey, come here, come here, give me that neck. No, I ain't 14, bro. I got a mortgage. <laughs> I got a rolly well, sitting well, in my, in my, in my, my uh, more, locker right now. More importantly, I know people, because it's a game, everybody looks at it this way. That's still the nigga's job. So he, he's on the job. He's on the job. He's there he's getting the paid. Hit. And this is what he's – he's basically saying that they're, the Buccaneers pay me to do this. The Glazer family pays me to do this. No, they don't. No, they don't. They don't pay him to do that. And that was like a – you got fifty thousand. I can see a guy like BA crazy enough retiring after this year. Hey, and maybe this speaks to something that everybody talks about BA being a player's coach, but you've listened to enough bits from BA uh, uh, press conferences. BA shits on everybody, and and BA yeah. has his aura about himself that that he's that guy. You know, like some of the stuff that he would say about Jameis, I'm like, oh, that doesn't really sit right with me. I wouldn't like that. But Jameis did do the 30 for 30. And I ain't talking ESPN. We talking picks and touchdowns. <laughs> then he comes out and he hits Brady with the, well, that's not how we practiced it. Like, well, hey, B.A., what do you think you are? You're talking, like, this is this that's is Brady. Tom Brady. Yeah. Like, like he, he's not like Aaron Rodgers, who we love his talent, only has one ring. Like, Brady got the rings. He got the MVPs. Like, he has everything cheers. that. He has more of everything almost than anyone. Yeah, right. Like you, know, you, need, you need to relax. You don't talk to him. There's like not that. a more accomplished player in the NFL. No, ever in, in any sport except for maybe Bill Russell. But Bill Russell didn't play in the modern era, so I don't. J- Jordan's anyway, pretty accomplished. I put Jordan. I mean, he's only got yeah. one last championship, yeah. but like Jordan won the MVP, like like it was nuts. five times. Yeah, and he did pretty, kind of like LeBron, and not to get into basketball like that, but kind of like LeBron. Every year that he didn't win, he realistically, if he wasn't him, he really would have won it. But, you know, like. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, hey, man, you need to watch how you talk to Brady. 